Welcome to the holiday edition of Cooking with Color for Kids. On today's show, our host Kristen Hess, the Artful Gourmet, will show us how to make some delicious dishes for the holidays, introduce us to Alex Carabano, the chef and co-owner of The V-Spot, a kosher, Latin, and vegan restaurant in New York City. We will also learn how to make vegan kale tostadas with kids at a Halloween party in Brooklyn, New York. So let's see what Kristen has for us. Hi, I'm Kristen, and welcome to Cooking with Color for Kids. For our holiday show, my focus will be making healthy comfort food dishes, chock full of seasonal colorful fruits and veggies, and ingredients that celebrate the fall and winter season. Fall colors of green, orange, red, yellow, and brown are highlighted in these dishes, and you're gonna love them. I'm planning on making a healthy baked farro casserole. It has tons of sauteed veggies like onions, peppers, zucchini, parsley, rosemary, all kinds of yummy stuff in there. Plus it's got a light cheesy sauce and it's topped with Parmesan and breadcrumbs and we're gonna bake it in the oven for a lovely dish that the kids can make for the holidays, either with leftovers or you can make it as a main dish if you like. I'm also planning on making a really, really nice fresh orange cranberry sauce made with fresh cranberries, pecans, some orange zest, and it's all done on the stovetop, and it's so easy to make, and it's obviously a wonderful um, side dish that goes with any holiday dinner that you and the kids want to make. So let's get started. <music> on Cooking with Color, we always try to make recipes that follow the USDA guidelines with four important criteria. Number one, the recipe should be healthy. Veggies and fruits should make up half of the dish. It should include healthy light proteins, low fat dairy, whole grains, and just be super healthy. Um, number two, it should be delicious, fresh, yummy, and simple. Number three, it should be original. We want the dish to be a recipe that you came up with and not coming from a published source. And number four, it should be affordable. You don't need any fancy ingredients, just really super fresh, healthy ingredients. And lastly, meaningful. We want to know how you came to make the dish and the story behind it. Before I show you how to make these really great fall holiday recipes, I'd like to show you a video called Eat a Kit. Eat a Kit is a school lunch program that's based in Philadelphia in the schools using fresh, healthy food, family style dining, and other healthy principles to improve the lives of children. The Vetri Foundation for Children established Eat a Kit as a platform to help kids experience the connection between healthy eating and healthy living. Through food, education, and social interaction, the VFFC works to give children the nutritional foundation they need to grow and thrive. Yes, Mama. Epidemics that we're faced in this country, you know, for one, our country is too fat. Over 30% of our population is either overweight or obese. It's starting to show up. I mean, you see it in people's health that they know how to consume something, they just don't understand how to nourish something. So it's like, because nourishing something is completely different. I had a kid ask me, I had an onion in my head last week. Uh, the little girl never seen an onion before. Can you imagine that? It's enough to bring tears to your eyes. In this environment, it's always about food. I mean, a, a child that hasn't had a good breakfast or a good lunch, they fall apart. They unravel in school. I mean, it's hard to take a test if you're hungry. It's not fair, I think, that these kids don't expect better. You know, they don't think they deserve a great meal. Well, why are we having it? We used to have just, just regular old pizza, but you deserve more than that. So that's why I'm here at six in the morning. That's why chef's here at four in the morning, because we know you deserve better. 
but we also realized it's how you eat, not so what you eat. So we developed a, a situation where kids would sit at round tables, and they'd eat the way we all did growing up in a home in a home environment. And this would become your family meal. Our lunch is like really like a restaurant. That's why we got like round tables, and we got silverware. Like you at a family table, and like just passing around the food. They communicate with people at the table because it's like a small group so we all can hear each other. We have table captains. Oh, okay, well the table captains go up and get the entrees and like get the salad and pour the water. They um, set the table for um, the kids. Clean up and get the food. Get the yeah. food. They make me feel happy because they all say thank you and you're welcome and all that. And you gotta be really professional. Why? Because you walking around the table and it and your people can see you. Before veterinary it was frozen this, you know, warmed up that, you know, um, it wasn't coming from the farm, it was coming from a factory. So it's a big difference, you know what I mean? Fresh food is always better for you, you know. These are good right now. Oh, oh my God! Beautiful. I'm kind of obsessed. Would with you look at that? that. <laughs> Whoa! No marks. That's the right. That's good eats right there. So good. Yeah. I'm going for it. Go for it. Get them. Freshman Gerard Avenue. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's the way to do it. Somebody's taking the time to make you a really nice meal. It's a lot of kind of love and attention that goes into making the food and, and thought and you know the kids get to experience that same kind of you care about me and you're special and you're treating me really well and I think that that's a dignity that anybody can have it doesn't have to be just patrons in a fancy restaurant. The veterinary program makes a lot of sense to me because who better to teach children about how to eat really well for a lifetime than chefs. So we had baked ziti today. Yay! That keeps me going every single day, knowing that I am helping and contributing in, in my small way to curtail a bigger problem that's happening in our country. Just to know that a kid got a healthy meal does a lot for me because you don't know what they're going to eat when they get home. At least, at least you know out of that one day they got something healthy, you know what I mean? So that's rewarding. Every child should have at least one healthy meal a day. It can't happen in every household, and we understand that. It's just a fact of the matter. But if we can do our part as a society to get a really good meal in the schools, whether you know they're going to eat anyway, so if we can make that meal the best meal they've ever had, then, okay, then great. We've done our portion of the big picture. Okay, my favorite one was the grilled cheese and turkey um, sandwiches. You know that pasta, they put cheese in it, it's really good. Little hamburgers that they make, they good. The turkey and rice that they make, that's good. Barbecue chicken, the healthy barbecue chicken. It is the whole interaction. It's that whole camaraderie. It's all about um, community, camaraderie. Um, social interaction um, and that coupled with the good food that you're eating I, I think is so important. It's living. It's life, you know, it really is. From the district's perspective, the Vetri Foundation actually created a catalyst for how we think about nutrition how we think about character, how we think about respect, and how students actually experience um, what so many of us take for granted, breakfast and lunch, um, and really experience a different type of atmosphere, and also being exposed to the type of healthy products um, that are presented in the right way. Uh, students are actually going home and then requesting those types of foods. We would love to see this expanded to as many schools as we possibly can expand it to as quickly as possible because we just think it is that important for our young people.
So I hope you enjoyed the Vetri Foundation video, and if you'd like to learn more about this great program, just visit the website below. So today on our fall show, I'm going to show you how to make a really delicious fall casserole. It's really super healthy and it's made with tons of vegetables and it's an awesome project that kids can use for the leftovers from Thanksgiving or the holiday dinner. It's a great easy project that they, the whole family can do and it's super healthy because I've added all kinds of fresh stuff in here. First of all, I'm using farro, which is a whole grain. Um, it's a, an Italian whole wheat grain and um, it's really full of like vitamins and minerals. There's lots of whole grain and fiber in there. So it's better than just using um, like a pasta or a regular white rice. It adds a little bit more nutrition. Um, what I do is you take about a cup of farro. You're going to boil it either in some chicken stock or water for about 20 minutes after you rinse the grains first. Then you're going to um, drain those, set them aside, and get started on your veggies. So what I have in this dish, it's so healthy and colorful and really tasty. I've got red, yellow, and green bell peppers. I've got some cipollini onions. If you can't find cipollini onions, which are just little baby sweet onions, you could use um, a small Vidalia onion or any kind of white onion. Um, you also have some fresh garlic. I've got some fresh parsley and rosemary chopped up about a tablespoon of each and also some fresh zucchini um, and some mushrooms and what I do is I take just a nice big saute pan put about a tablespoon or two of olive oil heat that up you're gonna chop all your veggies up you want to have about probably two cups of veggies for the casserole as you can see this is a smaller size casserole so you can actually double the recipe um, if you want to make a larger size maybe for you know the family dinner but this is just even a nice side dish um, you're going to saute your vegetables for about five to ten minutes until they get nice and kind of lightly browned and sauteed. You don't want them cooked too much because you're going to actually throw it all together and stick it in the oven. Um, and then it's super easy. You take your farro, throw it in a big mixing bowl. I used a really light cream Alfredo sauce. You could also make your own cream sauce if you want with a little bit of flour and milk. Throw a little bit of shredded cheese in there. You're going to mix that into the farro, throw your sautéed veggies in, put it in a casserole dish, bake it on 400 for about 10 minutes, maybe 15, 20 tops. Um, I also add a little addition, a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese and some breadcrumbs on top, and it's a really super healthy side dish. Um, if you want to throw in some turkey or ham, make a big casserole. It could also be a main dish, and it's really great for the kids to use leftovers, and it's super healthy, so enjoy. Another one of my favorite holiday fall dishes to make is homemade cranberry sauce. I'm sure you guys have all had the really yucky stuff that comes in a can. Not good. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to make a super healthy version on the stovetop. And it's made with fresh cranberries, orange, there's some pecans, and some other goodies. And I'm going to tell you how to make it. And it only takes maybe 20 minutes to make. Cranberries are so healthy and so fresh and easy to make. Um, so basically what you do is you get about four cups of cranberries, fresh obviously. You want to rinse those really, really well, set them aside in a colander. Um, you're going to get a cup of brown sugar, or you can use regular sugar if you like, but I like the raw sugar because it's a little bit more healthy. Um, and you can also even use a little bit of like agave syrup or honey, whatever you like for a sweetener. Um, you're going to boil the cranberries in a cup of sugar and a cup of water. You're going to zest some orange zest, which is just by using like a little knife or a peeler, you can kind of chop up the orange rind, um, maybe squeeze a little bit of juice in there, and you're going to just let that cook for about 20 minutes on. You're going to bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about 20 minutes. You're going to see the cranberries kind of pop open, which is when they're starting to get ready. 
Um, you're gonna just leave it on a low simmer and just keep cooking it um, for, yeah, maybe another 10 minutes until it starts to sort of turn into a gel. Um, you wanna make sure that the sugar is all dissolved. I also added some crunchy pecans. You can just chop those up, throw them in. And another fun thing, you can add anything you like in here. You could even do like crushed pineapple. I threw in some red grapes. You could do like a little jalapeno pepper if you want a little spice to it. And it's so good um, with any turkey holiday dish. Super fresh, super healthy, and easy to make. So I hope you enjoy it. We are me. so excited to have you here today, and I cannot wait to see what you're going to be making for the kids and for us today. Um, tell us a little bit about um, your background and how you got into cooking, and a little bit maybe about your restaurant and new restaurants to come and whatnot. Sure. So, so I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. Um, my family background is predominantly Colombian, so we were raised uh, eating a lot of Spanish food. Obviously, Latin food always contains meat, everything the rice, the beans, everything. Um, but with that, a lot of things that happen is that for our family, we've had a lot of high cholesterol. We've had some unfortunate heart attack deaths in the family. And you know, because the eating too much meat sometimes can be a problem. So we decided nine years ago to open up a Latin restaurant that doesn't have any of that. No meat, no dairy, no cholesterol, but still have the flavors. And um, we are, again, nine years in Park Slope three months now in the East Village, completely organic restaurant. And hopefully by January 1st in Murray Hill, is that the area? You yeah. Were East 24th between 2nd and 3rd, we're partnering with New York Comedy Club and we will have a small tapas V-Spot Gramercy room. That sounds fantastic and it's in my neighborhood, so that's even better. Um, I'm really intrigued by this combination of Latin, kosher, vegan. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the you know, food that you guys offer and what some of the flavors are, and then maybe we can get a little bit more into um, the dish that you're gonna make for us. Definitely, we, um, well, as I said, we're Colombian, so we do things like empanadas and mm -hmm. arepas, and um, instead of filling them with meat, we have sort of like a mushroom and cheese, it's delicious, mm -hmm. uh, Colombian style, which is potato-based, a lot of Latin seasonings. We also do a black bean and sweet plantain, and we do a Jamaican jerk empanada, which is a little spicy mm. and delicious. Sounds amazing. Okay. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit, um, you know, how the vegan, you know, the, the replacement, if you're not using, because, you know, typically Latin food, yeah, there's a lot of chicken, a lot of beef, a lot of pork. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about what are some of the alternatives. Obviously, lots of fruits and veggies, as we can see, but, Definitely. you know, how do you use the spices and other ingredients to replace that? Sure, well, these are kale tostadas, um, which are going to contain raw kale, black, black beans, raw kale, and we use something called Daya cheese, which is a dairy-free cheese, but tastes very similar. But as far as the mock meat, so to speak, we make something that's called seitan. I know it's Halloween, not Satan, seitan. <laughs> and uh, this is sort of um, a wheat product, and we just season it just like ground beef. A lot of people think ground beef has the flavor. It's actually the seasonings, the, yeah. cu the cumin, the paprika, the, the peppers, yeah. the olive oil, the little bits of olive. And it looks like ground beef, so, so yeah. you actually make it in-house. That's really yes. cool, because I know you can actually buy it at some of the Whole Foods stores, but um, that makes it really special that you guys have your own little recipe Thank and you. seasoning. So why don't we jump into these delicious kale tostadas? You can tell us sure. how to make it or show us, and then we'll get the kids on board and right. have a party. Then we're doing a tostada. Now, you could make corn tortillas from scratch, I just bought the uh, package brand. You can buy just corn tortillas, and what we do is we toast them. You can do that on a grill. You can literally do it right on the oven, um, mm. on the uh, the grill with the fire, the flame. Just, oh, directly on the grill. Yeah, and just grill. quickly, quickly uh, flipping it. That's brilliant. Don't burn yourself. Um, so yeah, basically you're just building it similar to a pizza. Uh, obviously these are very, they're crunchy. So we start with the black beans, and these are were seasoned in the V spot. Um, what kind of seasoning, or maybe you don't want to tell us. Uh, we don't want to give out all the secrets, <laughs> but uh, okay. love. That's what's in That's there, love. Great. They look great. Garden vegetables and some seasonings. 
So, and then you do your raw kale and just put it on raw. It might sound like, hey, you know, people usually use lettuce, but we want the healthier version. And honestly, it tastes delicious. And the, the nutrition, uh, nutrition value just um, jumps dramatically with mm -hmm. using kale. Now, again, this is, you can also use regular cheese if you really want to, but this is Daya cheese. You can find this in any health food section. Uh, all the stores are starting to carry this. Now, what I would personally do is melt the cheese, but we're in a studio. <laughs> we don't have that right now, but... So, so you would melt it first yeah. on the kale, okay. And then you would put the beans. Now, this is your, which again, looks just like ground beef, tastes basically exactly the same. You'd build it like this, mm. not too much. And then what we do is we make our own salsa, which is very popular Ooh. using all these ingredients here. Let me just move this. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I love that you guys make your own salsa. That's absolutely brilliant and the best way to eat it. So um, maybe tell us a little bit about what's in it and how you make it. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a mild salsa. It's predominantly tomatoes. We put some, a little bit of garlic, red onion, some cilantro, depending on how spicy you like it, jalapeno. Yes and some lime, and all you need is a good blender like this, and you're good to go, make, liquefy it. That's great, so you just chop up all the ingredients, throw it in, throw and you've got right some in, just... fresh salsa that's super healthy and fresh, and uh, that's awesome. So thank you so much for um, you. showing us your dish, and we are gonna be making these very soon with our kids for the holiday show, and uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs>
Isra, um, is this your first time on TV? Yes. Are you guys excited to be here? Yes. And Halloween, how fun. Okay, so why don't you guys share and we'll, um, you guys can make some tacos. Beans were first. Do you guys cook at home at all? Yeah. I help my mom sometimes. Yeah? What do you help your mom make? Sometimes we, I help her make the butter bread sometimes. Ooh, what's that? It's like some like square bread. We like, first it's like normal round. My mom puts butter in it and then like forms it up like a square. Uh huh. Cool. Of it's a couple of layers. Ooh, so it's a homemade bread. That sounds delicious. What about you? Do you cook at home? Sort of. Yeah? What do you guys make at home? Just regular food. Yeah? What's your favorite food to make? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Okay. Mom's in the background smiling oh, not over there. Much. Not, that much fun. <laughs> not that much fun? Okay. Well, everyone loves food and we're learning how to make it healthy and colorful and lightened up versions of it. Should we just do cut you, this in half? Do you guys like a little bit, of, that has a little bit of spice to it. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Awesome. I like a lot of spice. Perfect. Yeah, or we can grab you another tortilla <laughs> and you guys can have your own if you want. Or you can take this one, I'll make the next one. Okay. We'll get another tortilla cool. on set. I hope you guys enjoyed our holiday edition of Cooking with Color for Kids. We've had so much fun today with Chef Alex and all of our kids here on Halloween making vegan tacos and we're so getting ready to enjoy some candy and uh, we hope you guys have a great holiday as well and uh, eat lots of fresh colorful fruits and veggies and we look forward to seeing you next time on Cooking with Color for Kids. Thank you Brick so much for inviting us to the Halloween party at the Brooklyn Public Library in Coney Island. All the kids had a blast and we just all want to say Happy Halloween! All right, yay! Thank you guys. Have a great night. Get lots of.